Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday Morning Mastermind. I'm your host today, Samantha Studebaker Carl. I'm here with my good friends Dan and Jason and Kenji and Catherine. And today we are going to continue our discussion of the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. We are on page 279 at the part titled Living versus Understanding. But before we get going with that, I want to give my friends an opportunity to introduce themselves and then uh, Catherine can take it away with the reading. Go ahead and jump out, guys. Hey, good morning, Jason Roberts in Tampa Bay, Florida. We're looking forward to the reading this morning. Hope everyone's doing well. Good morning, Dan Sissick in cold Las Vegas. We've been dipping down in our temperatures, and we even had snow flurries uh, yesterday morning. So it's uh, a little chilly here, but looking forward to warming up with this book. Kenji here um, in Maine. So I did relocate this week. Looking forward to the reading. I saw that Lori just came on, so she's here with us too. Yeah, good morning, Lori. She's probably waiting for her audio to connect. I'll give her just a minute. I'm having a hard time unmuting. You're unmuted now, darling. Okay. You want to say hello to everybody? Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is Catherine Clement, and um, we're starting at Living versus Understanding. A few minutes later, her brother came to see her. He'd heard the voicemail she'd sent him and had responded by text at seven minutes after midnight. You okay, sis? Then, when the hospital contacted him, he'd caught the first train from London. He'd bought the latest issue of National Geographic for her while waiting at St. Pancras Station. You used to love it, he told her, as he placed the bed magazine bedside beside the hospital bed. I still do. It was good to see him, his thick eyebrows and reluctant smile still intact. He walked in a little awkward, head cowed, hair longer than it had been in the last two lives in which she had seen him. I'm sorry I've been incommunicado recently, he said. It wasn't about what Robbie said it was about. I don't even think about the labyrinths anymore. I was just in a weird place. After mom died, I was seeing this guy and we had a very messy breakup and I just didn't want to have to talk to you or recently to anyone about it. I just wanted to drink and I was drinking too much. It was a real problem, but I've started getting help for it. I haven't had a drink in weeks. I go to the gym and everything now. I've started a cross-training class. Oh, Joe, poor you. I'm sorry about the breakup and everything else. You're all I got, sis, he said, his voice cracking a little. I know I haven't valued you. I know I wasn't always the best growing up. But I had my own shit going on, having to be a certain way because of dad, hiding my sexuality. I know it wasn't easy for you, but it wasn't easy for me either. You were good at everything. School, swimming, music. I couldn't compete. Plus, dad was dad, and I had to be this fake vision of whatever he thought a man was. He sighed. It's weird. We both probably remember it in different ways, but don't leave me, okay? Leaving the band was one thing, but don't leave existence. I couldn't cope with that. I won't if you won't, she said. Trust me, I'm not going anywhere. She thought of the grief that had floored her when she had heard about Joe's death by overdose in Sao Paulo, and she asked him to hug her, and he obliged delicately, and she felt the living warmth of him. Thanks for trying to jump in the river for me, she said. What? 
I always thought you didn't, but you tried. They pulled you back. Thank you. He suddenly knew what she was talking about, and maybe more than a little confused about how she knew this when she had been swimming away from him. Oh, sis, I love you. We were young fools. Joe nipped out for an hour, picked up the keys from her landlord, collected her sister, his sister's clothes and phone. She saw that Izzy had texted. Sorry I didn't get back last night, this morning. I wanted a proper discussion. Thesis, antithesis, synthesis. The whole works. How are you? I miss you. Oh, and guess what? I'm thinking of coming back to the UK in June. For good. Miss you, my friend. Also have a ton of humpback pics coming your way. XXX. Nora made a slight noise of involuntary joy at the back of her throat. She texted back. It was interesting, she mused to herself, how life sometimes simply gave you a whole new perspective by waiting around long enough for you to see it. She went on the Facebook page of the International Polar Research Institute. There was a photograph of a woman she had shared a cabin with, Ingrid, standing with the field leader, Peter, using a thin measuring drill to gauge the thickness of sea ice and a link to an article headlined, IPRI research confirms last decade warmest on record for Arctic region. She shared the link and posted a comment, keep up the great work, and decided that when she earned some money, she would donate. It was agreed that Nora could go home. Her brother ordered an Uber. As they were pulling out of the car park, Nora saw Ash driving into the hospital. He must have been on a late ship. He had a different car in this life. He didn't see her, despite her smile, and she hoped he was happy. She hoped he only had an easy shift of gallbladders ahead of him. Maybe she would go along and watch him in the Bedford Half Marathon on Sunday. Maybe she would ask him out for coffee. Maybe. In the back of the car, her brother told her he was looking for some freelance session work. I'm thinking of becoming a sound engineer, he said, vaguely, anyway. Nora was happy to hear this. Well, I think you should do it. I think you'd like it. I don't know why. I just got a feeling. Okay. I mean, it might not be as glamorous as being an international rock star, but it might be safer, maybe even happier. That was a tough sell, and Joe wasn't entirely buying it, but he smiled and nodded to himself. Actually, there's a studio in Hammersmith and they're looking for sound engineers. It's only five minutes for me. I could walk it. Hammersmith? Yes, that's the one. What do you mean? I mean, I just think it sounds good. Hammersmith, sound engineer. It sounds like you'd be happy. He laughed at her. Okay, Nora. Okay. And that gym I was telling you about, it's right next door to the place. Ah, cool. Any nice guys there? Actually, yes, there is one. He's called Ewan. How did I ever say that? Ewan, Ewan, I can't remember. He's a doctor. He goes to cross training. Ewan, yes. Who? You should ask him out. Joe laughed, thinking Nora was just being playful. I'm not even 100% sure he's gay. He is. He's gay. He is 100% gay and 100% into you. Dr. Ewan Langford, that's how I'm going to say it, asked him out. You have to trust me. It will be the best thing you ever do. Her brother laughed as the car pulled up at 33A Bancroft Avenue. He paid, on account of Nora still having no money and no wallet. Mr. Bangerjee sat at the window, reading. Out on the street, Nora saw her brother staring in astonishment down at his phone. What's up, Joe? He could hardly speak. Langford. Sorry? Dr. Ewan Langford. I didn't even know his surname was Langford, but that's him. Nora shrugged. Sibling intuition. Add him. Follow him. DM him. Whatever you have to do. Well, no unsolicited nude pics, but he's the one. I'm telling you, he's the one. But how did you know it was him? She took her brother by the arm 
and knew there was no explanation she could possibly give. Listen to me, Joe. She remembered the anti-philosophy of Mrs. Elm in the Midnight Library. You don't have to understand life. You just have to live it. As her brother headed towards the door of 33A Bancroft Avenue, Nora looked around at all the terraced houses and all the lamp posts and trees under the sky, and she felt her lungs inflate at the wonder of being there, witnessing it all as if for the first time. Maybe in one of those houses was another slider, someone on their third or seventeenth or final version of themselves. She would look out for them. She looked at number 31. Through his winner, window, Mr. Banerjee's face slowly lit up as he saw Nora safe and sound. He smiled and mouthed a thank you, as if simply her act of living was something he should be grateful for. Tomorrow, she would find some money and go to the garden center and buy him a plant for his flower bed. Foxgloves, maybe. She was sure he liked foxgloves. No, she called back, blowing him a friendly kiss. Thank you, Mr. Banerjee. Thank you for everything. And he smiled broader, and his eyes were full of kindness and concern, and Nora remembered what it was to care and be cared for. She followed her brother inside her flat to start tidying up, catching a glimpse of the clusters of irises in Mr. Banerjee's garden as she went. Flowers she hadn't appreciated before but which now mesmerized her with the most exquisite purple she had ever seen, as though the flowers weren't just colors, but part of a language, notes in a glorious floral melody, as powerful as Chopin, silently communicating the breathtaking majesty of life itself. Okay, that's a good place to stop, because it'll give us a good uh, amount for next week, which will be the last week. Sounds good. <clears throat> All right. So there is there's a bit to talk about in this section. There was one part at the beginning that I, I went to underline and I couldn't find my pencil, but <clears throat> I can't remember which part it is. So I'll just go with this other part where she's talking about, um, she says to her, her brother, uh, you don't have to understand life. You just have to live it. What do you guys think about that? I mean, life's crazy, right? We're always thinking, I don't know, never know what to think about life, but it's saying, you know, she's like just suggesting you don't have to understand it. Just live it. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Well, I think that's just it. I think as we're growing up and as we, you know, go through our 20s and 30s, you know, we're trying to figure out and get all the answers as quickly as we can because you know we just want the answers but it's not until you know get uh, for me until I got my age which is now I look back and it's like why didn't I take more time to appreciate or really be in the moment and, and take time to really experience rather than rushing through my life I mean I think I experienced them but it's been weird uh, over the last mm, few months I've been really trying to sit back and go back and revisit points in my life that you know I'm trying to keep them fair and fresh in my mind because those were you know some of those moments were when, when I think I was living the best and I didn't realize it you know like when I got to go on my trips to Hawaii with my family when I <coughs> <coughs> sorry with the cough um when I got to go and you know take off and go down to LA or go up to San Francisco or even just go to friends and hang out or you know just the actual living and experiencing and I think we forget to put emphasis on that and really take it in so that way it we absorb it more and it becomes a, a real big part of us that we feel not just, oh, I did this. And we kind of 
forget what all we did. And I'm, I, I don't want to lose that. I, I'm trying to really, you know, especially the big moments, like with my brother's family, with my mom, with my, you know, uh, Silver and his wife, because I'm very close to them and, you know, his daughter. And, th you know, I'm trying to really just take those moments and really experience them when I, when I'm in those moments, because I'm realizing that that's part of what makes life life. It's not the, you know, oh, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this, I accumulated this, I, you know, got this big, you know, it's, it's not those, it's the actual experiences. I'll just hop out real quick, Dan, because I, 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 and in, in regards to like what you're what you're saying there, I mean, um, and I, if I understand at least part of that is, um, you know that you know experiencing uh life and you and looking back at at your experiences and 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 wondering if you, I mean at least for for me it's if you got everything out of it, if you enjoyed it enough, if you put enough into it, you know, um, I did, I did appreciate things as a, as a kid, I was unusual, I think in that respect that I really appreciated like nature and, um, the nature of existence and all that. But I, I spent a lot of time enjoying it and just kind of, being in it and and appreciating it that way whereas a whole nother way of appreciating it is just to like just tackle it and go in and and you know get on a on a really um almost a crazy schedule to do as much as you possibly can every single day and uh and then but when you do that you almost it almost becomes a a, a blur i think or maybe you know you kind of never stop to you know, smell the roses sort of thing, or, you know, I think, and so in under, in thinking that way, I sort of, I uh, also then think about how they're, you know, maybe doing it one way or the other way isn't necessarily, I mean, it's just whatever's right for you, but a, a balance seems to be, you know, possibly what I would be uh, content with, you know, um, as you get older, I realize, you know, hey, there's less and less time. Time is flying by, it seems. <laughs> when you're younger, it's like, oh, there's so much time. So I can't, you know, I got to wait for this and wait for that. And and now it's like, oh, my gosh, I, I don't have time to get this stuff done. And um, so it's the it sort of sort of flips on its uh, it flips you on your head a little bit, I think, as as you grow older. Maybe that's my problem. I'm flipped on my head. Well, I think that's what I think that's what I'm kind of trying to get at is I think when I was younger and I had, you know, opportunities and stuff for when those things came up, I didn't realize while I experienced them and I was in them full, you know, full, you know, head on and you know everything but I because like when my mom passed away my brother and his wife cleared out my mom's house due to some stuff that happened I didn't really get a chance to go in and look through some of the old pictures and get some of the old things that were like from that my mom had that were from like the trips and stuff and things. so now I'm trying to remember aspects of it but i don't have the physical like some of the pictures where i could look at it and say oh well we were here or oh you know some of that so and then um and then other times i do have pictures 
but you know, it, it's kind of like I'm going through the old movie reels of my life that I've got stored away in the drawer, so to speak. And I pull them out and I'm trying to, you know, <coughs> understand and, and appreciate what I took for granted, I think, a little bit back then. Because my mom had decent money. My mom, you know, worked at a good job. <coughs> You know, I wanted trips. I paid for my own plane ticket, but that was part of the deal. If you want to go, you pay for your own plane ticket, you know. So in those things, I'm trying to not lose some of that. Be now, especially now that my mom's passed, been passed away for two and a half years, I'm trying to help. And as I'm getting older and um, I live by myself, so I'm more, you know, I don't have immediate family like right around me, kind of like, you know, um, except maybe Lori who has her roommate, but um, it's it's kind of different for me, I guess, in some ways, because I'm trying to keep from letting life just happen and pass me by. I'm trying to Take it all in, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, if I can um, relate it to something that maybe um, today's culture might um, be able to relate to a little bit better. It's like if you're you're playing a video game for the first time you just sort of go through each level and try to get through the level and then if you go back and try to do it again you 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 kind of know where to go and you know what to look for you know the things that that you need to now pick up and 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 um and take a look at and and the, the you know how to interact with everything a little bit more so I mean, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, as they say. And I mean, I guess sooner you can, you know, have those revelations that you that hey, maybe there's a a different way of going, um, a different way of interacting and experiencing life. Um, maybe I this time, you know, next time I go to this event, I'll try it a different way and. Um, I mean, you know, you know, may may the universe bless us with the opportunity to do that. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be interesting if we had do overs? It's hard not to have regrets if you think about it that way. I. I don't know if I want to have necessarily do-overs. I do want to be more... How do I say it? I guess maybe awake or more uh, purposeful in those moments when I'm in them. And to in maybe in that moment say, oh, wow, this is, you know, one of those moments where, oh... You know, I need to soak this all in for because who knows, maybe tomorrow I won't have a tomorrow, you know. So in this moment, you know, kind of do the best I can. Don't just be take it so cavalier, I guess, so to speak, you know, like, oh, OK, well, just another like last night I went to our Desert Dogs lacrosse game. Me and my friend have season tickets. He's paid for them up front. I'm trying to get them paid back. But, you know, so I'm like, oh, yeah, well, we've got another game in a couple of weeks. I'll go. To, but rather than I may not be here in two weeks, so why not enjoy this one, do the best I can, and really soak it in. And But if I am here in two weeks, I really have this vivid moment that 
I may get to experience again in another way with another team. You know, that's kind of how I think I'm looking at it. The biggest thing I think about now is that we have to be present in the now. All we have is the now. Yeah, I agree, Laurie. It's it is the now that is you know where we get the most out of. <laughs> but I think it's hard to stay in the now a lot of times when you have a lot of things going on in life and <clears throat> and uh, for me, I always feel like I'm in a hurry. You know, I'm in a hurry to get this done so I can get this other thing done so I can get that other thing done so I can potentially go and spend time doing the thing I really want to do or whatever. You know. And so a lot of the times I'm, I'm in this, instead of being in the now, I'm in this uh, hurry up for the next or the later or, or whatever. And, and um, I have to remind myself that the, the now is what I have and, and really decide, okay, you know, how important is this thing I think I have to hurry up and do? Or can I just take a moment and be in the now and just experience you know, some calmness or do some meditation or exercise or whatever. Cause I find myself a lot of times putting off those self-care things because I need to get something done. You know, I got to get this thing done, but then inevitably if I work on getting the thing done, then I've got another thing to do and another thing to do. And then all of a sudden I've got to go, you know, get my granddaughter off the bus or take my grandson you know, to daycare or whatever. And, and then I've lost a whole day and haven't done anything for myself. So I think it's a, it, it's a balancing act, you know, trying to, to, to balance the things that, you know, quote unquote, need to get done with the being mindful and in the present moment. And I would call that kind of more of the self-care uh, aspect of, of my life, if you will. <clears throat> so yeah I think it's a balancing act and and then uh, another thing is just like this whole concept of um um what was it I said at the beginning of not having to understand life and just living it I I struggle with that aspect of it because I'm very introspective and so I'm constantly thinking about the meaning of everything you know and so I get caught up in all of that mumbo jumbo too. And, and realistically, I don't have to figure everything out. I just, uh, I can just live and, 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 tr and not stress out so much about every little thing, uh, whether it's important or not important or, or whatever. I totally agree at my older age is difficult and working with this program about, building something fantastic for the rest of my life, whatever, when you're at retirement age and all of these people are taking this class, building this great thing for their future, what they're going to be, what they're going to do. And I'm just constantly remind, reminded that it's all about chasing the crumbs, the dust and we were dust in the beginning and we're formed into this and then we're going to become dust again. And, you know, what does it all mean? What does it all matter? And I'm just like you, Samantha, analyze everything. I think about it all the time. and Too much clutter up in the brain, sweeping out the dust. <laughs> Yeah, it's easy to get um, kind of caught up in your in your own head thinking about like um, the whys and wherefores and 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 then also, you know, worrying, you know, how you impacted things in the past and how you impact things in the future and all that and and then never really get anything done because you're kind of stuck in a in a holding pattern. Um, Whereas I think, and that um, that's really the, um, you know, it doesn't allow you to get to, to actually do anything um, 
and actually go out and experience things. Because, you know, a lot of times we can get ideas in our head and think about how things are going to be or, you know, get ideas about how things were. And they, they're they totally like in in the book, you know, he her brother mentioned, you know, I, I, I know you probably you probably remember things differently than how I remember, you know, he said to her. And, um, you know, that's the that's really the case. Um, just because you think you know, someone is, you know, had a different, you know, uh, was impacted a certain way, doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it was that way. And, um, you know, so like, I, I totally agree with you. Like, I mean, you know, uh, all we have is the now, but you can't, you know, I mean, we can't, we can't avoid being in the now. So it's like, how do you maximize the the now? And it's it's almost like, having that ability to um, very quickly address your ideas of, of uh, your concerns about past and what might happen in the future, according to what you're deciding to do that day, but really quickly just touch on that and then get moving and go do it. And, and then um, just a little bit better than the day before, you know, just keep moving and doing a little bit better each each day and um what more can you can you really hope for i think one of the things i've just uh, been you know kind of a you know I've had a regret about stuff in the past is just that along the way i did enjoy it i did try to maximize the day you know try to en enjoy things as much as i i could um so far in a lot of ways um you know like in um in school, just tried to join every club and do everything that was available, you know, um, and um, and uh, but the one thing I kind of regret is that I didn't, um, and maybe I just didn't know how. Is along the way, let everybody know how how um, grateful I was and how happy I was to to be there and to 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 enjoy the time with those people, you know. Um, cause I, I guess along the way I was thinking, oh, I've, I've just met this new person and, oh, I'll, I'll see them, you know, quite often from the now on for the rest of my life. And so many of those people I don't ever, you know, haven't heard, haven't seen, or, you know, don't know any, any, you know, where they were. And it was always, uh, I would just kind of regret not being able to ever say that, you know, how much I appreciated the time. Um, I spent with them. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> well, I think it's like like you were talking about, and I think in, you know, it's not you know uh, the you know what was it? Uh, uh, I can't find it now. But what what you were you know saying when you first you know, spoke about it. And I think well, about him saying that we kind of look at things differently or we might remember things differently. Well, that too. And what uh, Nora said, you know, that Samantha brought out right in the beginning, but I can't find that little bit right now about it's about living, you know, about, you know, you know, that bit. But, life. It, but it's I mean, I've I've seen it within my own family. I've seen where you know, like with my sister, you know, the way she views some of the things from the past and how she sees that it's affected her life, and she blames, you know, she blames some of the right people, but at the same time, as she's gotten older and some of the choices in her life that she's made, she's made those decisions, but yet it's everybody else's fault, you know. So it's you know. I've lived that, you know, I'm looking at it from, you know, this point of view and I'm like, but you made those choices. Had you made different choices, you would have had a different outcome, you know? So it's kind of, you know, so I've seen, I've lived that out, you know, personally, but at the same point, you know, I, it, I have just, gone through those moments where it's 
Yeah. Oh, okay. I never knew that. So thanks, Kenji. Um, but it's, you know, just interesting how, you know, Nora really realized that, you know, it's being in the moment and, and taking it. And she's learned that some of what she learned from her lives in the library now are starting to play out in her real life. Watching her brother on the cusp of meeting the man that he will end up marrying. You know, seeing Mr. Banerjee, realizing that her existence also gives him a little bit of reason for living. And that, you know, it's not so much, oh, woe is me. I'm, you know, my life is nothing. But because now she has a precious gift that she was allowed to receive now now she can kind of guide her brother in the right direction to a relationship that now is starting to form because of what she went through and almost dying but it brings it kind of full circle now she can help him start to live too and start working towards the life that he wants so it's interesting how you know she's growing in that aspect and taking i think i think she's taking what she learned to heart from the the, the lives in the library her thoughts have changed a lot since the beginning of the book in the beginning of the book she was very very focused on just herself, um, very self-centered, maybe not in the definition that we typically think about when we think of that, but it's the same thing, no matter how you look at it. She was, she was totally focused on what a failure she was in every aspect of her life. And um, I think... Some people's thoughts never change. They go through their whole life like that. And then other people's thoughts, you know, when they're doing work like this on their own or they're in a group like this, you know, we learn how to change our thoughts quite a bit. And then it also kind of depends on where you're at in your life. Like Lori mentioned earlier, you know, when you're, when you've already done the career and all the businesses and all the stuff that you're going to do and you're at retirement age, your thoughts are much different than when you're in the prime of your life and you're still trying to figure out what you want to be, or you're trying to, you know, get something going or whatever, like your thoughts, not just your, your whole mission kind of changes as <laughs> you go through different stages of life. You know, there's just like, I don't know, there's, I had kids very, very young, way too young, you know, so I kind of went through the, the family and I, I'm all, I'm sort of at the point where I've kind of like, yeah, been there, done that <laughs> sort of thing. But that doesn't mean that I don't still enjoy life. I enjoy life very, very much. Um, and I do, obviously seek out things to enjoy and stay in the moment with those things and uh you know there's just different stages of life where you're a lot of them are doing 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 and some people do their whole life like my dad my stepdad he he is a doer he's in his 70s he's still a doer he, he does from, you know, the minute he wakes up until the minute he goes to bed, he does. And I'm very much a beer. <laughs> like I'm being here. Um, I mean, I do things, obviously I do things. And, but even when I'm doing things, I'm like, being there 
I don't, I don't really know how to explain it, but uh, Kenji mentioned sure. transcendental meditation and it is kind of like that. I mean, you're, you're kind of observing. It doesn't mean that you're not there and you're not enjoying it. It certainly doesn't take any of the uh, pleasure out of anything and it, and it adds tremendous gratitude. But um, yeah, he said human beings, not human doings exactly. And I've heard Lori say that too. <laughs> we're human All beings. All the time. Yeah, we're human beings, not human doings. But it's hard to be, you know, like my stepdad can't be. He cannot be. <laughs> he just, uh, it, it just, when he is being, he, it, it's obvious to me that it makes him feel um, less than, unworthy, like he's not doing enough. I mean, where do we get the idea when we come into this life that we have to do all these things and make all these accomplishments and in order to feel loved is what it typically boils down to in order to, like in his case, I think it's in order to feel loved and accepted and, you know, to feel worthy of having a life. And I know, you know, when you're serving people, that that kind of doing when you're serving people, obviously that is a doing that needs to be done. I mean, there's a lot of doings that need to be done. So thank God for the doers, right? <laughs> uh, I'm so grateful to all the people who are doing right now so that I can be. I really That's am. That's why I take extra steps to say thank you for working because yes. you know all the people that are out there doing and working make it possible for things to carry on in life the way we have it back when our elders it was all about survival you have to be doing something important like you know tending to the farm or whatever and if you're not busy doing something that's how I grew up you know what was expected of you you had to carry your weight you had to it's just a different time now and we got to be in the now and trying to start something now um it's like I cannot keep up with technology and how fast everything is moving and changing every day. Um, it's just crazy. So that I that thought of being the human being or human doing goes through my head all the time. I'm not doing anything that is going to matter after i'm gone i won't be remembered for whatever and however i make my impact it is what it is i guess that's all i can say Well, you know, doing and being are, are you know, um, really interlaced. And, you know, you, if, you know, you think about <laughs> when you, when you do the things that a farmer does, you are being a farmer. <laughs> so you can be just, just, you know, it just doesn't, um, but to keep, you know, try to keep up with the schedule of the rest of the world. I mean, yeah, I, I just you know, do it at your own pace. And a lot of times a different, you know, personal perspective um, is, is what the world needs. And that comes out of, you know, that individual's own, um, you know, working at their own pace and seeing things in their own unique way. So um, uh, I say, you know, don't, don't get stuck worrying about not being able to 
keep up with um, the pace of other things, um, you know, or other people, or the rest of the world and technology. I mean, nobody can. They're, they're just, um, you know, going about um, being and and doing things in the best way they can, or with the amount of time that they can on their on their limited time and and schedule and um that is the part of the doing that that keeps things going and i think really kind of makes th life interesting so um i appreciate you and you're you know being great right now so just um you know keep keep doing that and i know you like to to write and um you've got a lot of a lot of good ideas you know just keep at it. Just keep at it. Don't worry about the outcomes. I think I get stuck thinking about the outcome so much, uh, so much of the time. Um, sometimes it's good that I think things completely through, and so many, um, and I avoid some some issues. But more often than not, it it kind of keeps me in the paralysis of analysis. But that's just my that's the way I've experienced things. That's good. I love that phrase, paralysis of analysis. And you're doing great too, Jason. <laughs> oh, thank you. I mean, it, it's like this balance, like today's a beautiful day out, out um, but I also have a lot of things to do inside. I feel good enough and in a good, uh, you know, mental place to be working on some of my things um, that are sort of um, um, you know mentally uh, exhausting <laughs> in indoors. But it, outdoors is great. So right now, where it's been raining and you know stormy. Um, so sometimes you, I, you know, just have to. I feel like I have to be flexible and sometimes change my, um, you know, change my plans a little bit and still get that balance in there. So this afternoon I'll be going going downtown to um, to the park. They've got some things going on this this weekend, and you know it's the new year, and everyone's. Um, looking forward to a good new year and kind of like to be part of that rather than cooped up in my room or my house <laughs> all day. <laughs> so. It's hard to be everywhere at once. You know, I it's gorgeous outside here, sitting here inside, but I'd have to have three parkas and gloves and boots and everything to go outside and I'm not doing it I know it's like five degrees or it feels like you know with the wind chill and everything it feels like five degrees here so I'm going to enjoy indoor activities today thank you very much <laughs> I agree <laughs> um, my last just little bit for the day because I know we're past the top of the hour already but um it, it, I came across this video. I posted it on my Facebook so you can go watch it. But um, it shocked me how much this video made me bawl. Like I literally just was crying, bawling, watching this video. It's a very sweet video. It's good, happy tears. But, you know, I was thinking about how much we kind of chastise our our inner child sometimes and and we do our best not to act like a child you know don't act like a child sometimes I feel like that I feel like I'm acting like a child and I always kind of chastise myself over that and um, we tell people to grow up constantly why can't you just grow up or you know it's always about 
getting away from our childhood, getting away from our childhood traumas or whatever. But but it, when you just watch that video and you just embrace the love and the pureness and the open hearts that are in that video, and we lose all that. I think we need to be more like our five-year-old child every day instead of trying to get away from it. I think we need to embrace that little boy or that little girl and have some fun and, uh, and learn to love again. Because watching that video just like breaks your heart open, or it does mine anyway, and it makes me realize how closed my heart is a lot of the times, even though like I tried to not let it be, but I don't know, just go watch the video and see if you cry, I guess. I love you guys. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. <laughs> wonderful week to you all. I will watch it after my next event. So I, if I start crying, I'll be a mess for hours. <laughs> anyway, bless you all. Have a great week. I, I was yeah, thank you. About one last, like, uh, you know, uh, Catherine did. I, I agree. I think there are times where it's, we need to be just that silly kid self, even if it's even if it's when we're alone and by ourselves, and we just can be in that moment because, you know, like me, I know, you know, I have a big. I have lots of love and lots of love to give, but to as much as I want it back, I think I'm very guarded and careful and cautious about where I let it in from. So in that sense, you know, because of, you know, what I've gone through, you know, you know, all my life. <laughs> and as much as I want it, but I don't want it this is going to sound weird. I don't want it except in the way that I want it. If you kind of can understand what I'm throwing out there, you know, and I don't mean it to be mean or, you know, put anybody down or, you know, and that might be part of, you know, where, you know, I need to open up more and maybe watching this video and just letting loose and being that kid a little bit again, going back to that real pure innocence <clears throat> where, you know, I, you know, like kids, you know, kids just for the most part genuinely love each other, you know, no matter what, you know, um, and you see it all the time. It's not until as we get older and we, you know, pick up things that we lose that. And you know, I think you know more of the world needs to go back to being. A kid, even if it's just for five minutes, just cut loose, let loose, go color for a half hour, go, you know, dance in the rain or go, you know, to the park and chase butterflies, you know, whatever kind of, you know, makes your heart kind of sing in that moment and open up so that way when you do get around other people, they sense it and they can feel it and you're more open to it. And I need to do that more. Yeah, it's a good, great point, Dan. Hey, Ken, I saw you had your hand up. Did you want to say something? Did you could just unmute your mic? And... Yeah, I, I just don't know if we have enough time. I mean, um, it sure, might take me an hour or two. I'm just teasing. Um, <laughs> what we're talking about is... Um, I mean, it all goes into my daily practice of um, meditation, uh, slowing myself down. For 60 some odd years, I did not live in the moment. I didn't even know I wasn't living in the moment. And I didn't have a relationship with that inner being that was me because I didn't even know it was in there. But CRPS, um, you know, I had a way of slowing me down. It took everything from me, everything that I used to escape um, being in the moment was taken away. Um, and I'm left with my chihuahua in me. And um, 
and I got to find me. I mean, finally, um, now I know, you know, um, I'm going to say this quickly because I know we don't have a lot of time, but they did a study. They took infants and uh, they separated them from their moms and they observed the infants and um, they can learn a, a tremendous amount about how the parent raises the child when the parent leaves the baby. And for those of us who don't live in the moment, when mom leaves, we don't, nothing happens. We just sit there and we kind of pick our nose and we just look around. It doesn't bother us because we've already learned how to not be in the moment, how to be away from that love. And we've learned how to use outside stimulus to escape those feelings. So I just want to say, that's all I wanted to say. That's, that's right down the path of, um, of what I'm doing here. And that there's no accident. There's no reason. There's no accident that I, you know, end up in this group with you guys. So thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome points. And yeah, I appreciate that. For thank sure. you for being here. Yeah, I appreciate that input. Yeah, I, I think, you know, maybe just as a, you know, my closing statement is just that, you know, I, I would say if there is anything that is um, bothering you right now or, you know, about anything, uh, see if you can just shake it off so that you can move forward at least today and at least, you know, now and today and, and make the most of, of today without those, um, those feelings or those moments um, of, um, of, you know, whatever um, holding you back. No regrets. Yeah, kind of no regrets and, and like kind of, you know, experiencing it like a, like a child again, you know, um, no preconceived ideas. Just go, just go, go do and be and have fun and, and live and love and, and all that good stuff. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Catherine, for the terrific reading again today. Love you guys. Love y'all too. Well said, everybody. All right. For those of you who are watching, if you enjoyed this, give us a like on YouTube, share it with anybody you think might find it helpful. And uh, if you'd like to join us, you can find us by searching for Mindset Mastery Collective on Facebook, or there'll be some links below the video where you can just click over and, and jump in our Facebook group where you can find the pinned post shows you the, the link to get into our Zoom room every week. It's the same. It doesn't change. And uh, we generally get together 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on Saturday mornings. So with that, guys, have a great, awesome, amazing week. And we'll see you next time on the Saturday Morning Mastermind. Bye for now.